this is Jordan, and you're listening to the Code 7 Podcast Network. Warning. This episode contains the three A's of podcasting. Adult content, adult language, and awesomeness. You've been warned. Welcome to Within the Trenches, true stories from the 911 dispatchers who live there. Hey, what's going on? This is Ricardo with the Code 7 Podcast Network, and this is going to be episode 346 of Within the Trenches, true stories from the 911 dispatchers who live them. This episode is sponsored by InDigital as well as Rapid Deploy and... There's a lot going on. I know I've said that in these past couple episodes, <laughs> but there definitely is so much going on. It is September 15th, um, 2020, and we are rapidly approaching to October. And October 6th through the 9th is going to be the Dare to Be Great Fall Virtual Conference. Make sure to check it out. Make sure to register at withinthetrenches.net slash conference. You'll get all of the information there, all of the keynote speakers, the conference speakers, the uh, the sponsors, and vendor hall sessions that are going to be going on. There are some amazing sessions that you're going to be getting into, and it is it's just, it's going to be excellent. So make sure to go out there and check it out. A big shout out to the patrons um, of the podcast. I wouldn't be able to do everything that I do without your support, as well as all of you who watch and listen to every single show that's part of the Code 7 Podcast Network. Thank you so very much. And of course, once again, to the network sponsors. There is, uh, again, there's a lot going on and I am... I'm very excited to have uh, my guest here. We have been talking for a while now, and actually, I think it was this past February was when we actually met up, and we met up at the uh, the Calnina conference before everything went to hell, uh, pandemic wise. And uh, we've been we were trying to get an episode going, and here we are. And my guest is also a speaker for uh, Dare to Be Great. She was there for Dare to Be Great 1. She's going to be there for Part 2. And this is is going to be fun. We were already talking beforehand, and I am, I am stoked. I'm excited for this episode. This is going to be good. So my guest today is Luce, and she is a 911 dispatcher out of uh, Southern California, as well as the founder of Dispatch Wellness. Hey, hey. Hi. So Hi. excited yeah. to be here. Yeah, this is, man... It's been a while. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just, I was hearing you talk and I'm like, yes, that's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> like, hi. <laughs> hi, friend. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, everything went to hell a little bit after you and I were over at that conference. We had a long conversation. And even before that, I knew I was like, oh, we got to get around. We got to talk some more and uh, just find out more about your story as well as what you're doing with dispatch wellness but yeah we were we were there and then things just literally two weeks later we were on lockdown right (laughs) yes literally this is not an exaggeration yeah Um, yeah. it was it was just interesting how fast it went because i think when i left there from the conference i had maybe two and a half three days at home and then i flew out to uh to georgia for their conference and when I got there, there was already talk going on about all these different shutdowns that were going on. And I remember at the conference, um, those who were there, not only the attendees, but those who were running it, were wondering if some of the speakers were going to show up. And mm-hmm. all the speakers did show up after all. But I remember when I went back home, I flew into Detroit and there were TSA people all over the place. And some big groups of people in uh, suits that I have never seen before in an airport (laughs) like that. And it was very creepy going down the escalator and seeing them all huddled around, some of them wearing masks already. And I thought, oh, man, get ready. It's going to get crazy. So who were these people in suits, Ricardo? This sounds like a sci-fi movie. That's why, (laughs) yeah. (laughs) That's why I freaked out as well. I, I took a picture of them. And then after I took a picture, I thought, man, someone's going to come and tackle me because I took that picture. 
<laughs> you made me think, and we're both like '90s nerds. Um, mm -hmm. You made me think of Men in Black right now. Yes, yes. exactly. Were yeah. they wearing sunglasses? No, that's the only part that kind of killed it. <laughs> I should have just said yes. <laughs> yeah, you should have. They had pens and they zapped me. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> that is all I remember. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it, it got it got a little weird, and you know, with that, you know, a bunch of different things happening where. Uh, you know, training's getting canceled, uh, uh, conferences are getting canceled, all these different events that we're all part of and stuff. And then Dare to Be Great happens. And when I started putting this together, I knew I had to have you on there because of what we'll get into here uh, in a little bit with Dispatch Wellness. But the session that you did, holy moly, like I'm so you're doing your thing. And I'm I'm watching, and uh, you know my camera's turned off. Well, I'm talking to Leah, who's also helping me in the background. And I remember she kept saying she's amazing. I was like, I know. I was like, I am so relaxed. But in the comments, every single person was just so amazed at what it was that you were doing. And I, I'm sitting there like doing like holding my stomach, and 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 breathing and doing all this stuff. It was just excellent. So thank you so much for doing that. Mm. Thank you so much for saying that. It makes me so happy to hear that it was well received. And Dare to Be Great wasn't just happening, right? Like you made it happen. And then you invited me. So thank you for having me on there. What a great vision. Trainings were shutting down. And you probably know that better than any one of us because you're pretty involved in conferences and just national trainings all over the country. But we were shutting down and I think just a platform where we could remember to focus on our career because we were still going to be very much a part of our career and ourselves and our wellness and each other is just so wonderful, such a wonderful thing to do during such trying times. Right. And yeah, things because of all of that, just the, the mental health and wellness of everyone mm -hmm. during this whole time has been you know, way up here and people trying yeah. to figure out different things to do. And I think this all happened at the, just the right time. And especially during your session, I, <laughs> I remember specifically seeing someone uh, put in the comments, uh, actually a couple things. One was that they, they wanted to um, have you do a house visit or something so that, <laughs> so that you could be there while they're trying to sleep. And then what was the other one? Um, just to, to have you on audio so that they can listen to you all the time right before they crash out or after an incident or something like that. That's how, mm. that's how well received it was. It was, it was awesome. And that makes me so happy. Although I don't do house visits. Um. <laughs> you did say that, yeah. <laughs> I do not, especially not for bedtime. Um, so that's beyond the realm of my expertise, but I am working on having recordings more available for everyone. I do, I do want to make that a reality. That is awesome. So, and yeah. I will be one of the first there for it as well. Cause I remember when I was, when, when you were, when you were going through the whole thing, I remember sending Leah a message back uh, as well saying, dude, I need to listen to this stuff all the time. I need this. I, I think everybody needed this right now, but I definitely need this as well. So it was not only well received, but what you're doing is is amazing. But um, before we get into everything that you're doing now, I want to go back in time and I want to learn more about you. I want I want to know how uh, you got into public safety to begin with. Like, do you come from a public safety family or did you just fall into it like a lot of us did? Yeah, not at all. I don't have anyone in my family who's part of public safety. I was going to get married and um, that's literally how my story begins. <laughs> it was 2007 and the recession was looming over everyone's head. And here I was really young and going to make this monumental life choice. And I thought, well, what better way to have a job that I can contribute. I, I still had really big expectations of what I wanted to do because again, really young. And so I'm like, I want to contribute. I want to do something really meaningful. And also I want it to be steady, you know, no big, no big ask. Um, I just right. wanted it all. Yeah. <laughs> and so I started looking for work in local government and ended up in police records. So that's 
that's how it started just because of my background. I had some account coordinating background. I was working in corporate at that time in 2007. And so because of my experience, it was a good fit. Just police records was a good fit at that time for me. And that's how I got into public safety was just looking for a job that was steady and meaningful in 2007. So I think that's it's pretty significant to note that it was that year. It was a really difficult year um, for the country. It was going to be really difficult for the economy really quick after that. Yeah. I, a lot happened in 2007. Yeah. I, <laughs> a lot of stuff happened to me as well in 2007. I was, I was in uh, dispatch already for a few years. Um, well, in, in the center that I ended up finishing off my uh, career at, and yeah, definitely a lot of stuff happened in 2007, but you, so you're in records and all, how do you then find out about, uh, dispatch? Did just, someone just come in one day and, or was there a posting or something and you find out that this is going on um, and you wanted to jump in? Because you already kind of had, you know, um, some information on law enforcement, on, on public safety, on how to, you know, what's going on with it. Um, but how did you get introduced into uh, dispatching then? Yeah, so I think that's so wonderful that you say that because I love my background in records. It really gave me a deep understanding of behind the scenes. Records works really, really hard. And so shout out to them. Anytime I mention them, I send them so much love. It's so much work, nonstop work. And I was enjoying it. But so I, the agency I started out was very small. It was a three square mile city. And at that time, they were in a building. Now they're in a really beautiful building, but they were in a building that was almost like an old house, mm -hmm. um, for lack of a better description. And from records to get to the kitchen, I've been drinking coffee here and I don't even know if it's allowed on the podcast, but I've been doing it anyway. <laughs> okay, good. Um, <laughs> I love coffee. It's something everybody that knows me knows. And so I'd walk to the kitchen a lot to get coffee and you'd walk by dispatch and it would, they were almost in a little closet. It was literally a closet and I'm not exaggerating. It was dark and there was no windows and they were still plugged in and it was just wall-to-wall -wall equipment. But I would walk by and see them and was really taken by the energy in the room. I would walk by and they were always doing something really intense, it seemed like. Mm -hmm. And I would stop and watch them and just, I was attracted to the energy in the room, the buzz, um, what they were saying over the phone, the people they were helping. Yeah, I, I was just really attracted to dispatch and that's kind of what got me interested in making the move from records to dispatch. And then of course there was an opening and, and there I went. The agency was really supportive. That yeah. also helped, right? They right, were of course. really, really supportive. I put myself through the dispatch Academy, which is three mm -hmm. weeks. And they allowed me to do like all kinds of shift trades and work with my schedule so I could put myself through it and then be a good candidate for the position. So I, I was lucky. I was really lucky. Yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. So so you you're going back and forth to get your coffee and stuff, mm -hmm. and you like you said, you're attracted by the energy and stuff. Did you do? Um, did you ever have a, a moment where you actually sat there for a little bit to to take it in even more so? Yeah, I would. So because it was like a hallway, and then there was a wind window. There were kind mm -hmm. of windows to the center. So yes, I would I would watch them and take it in. And also I worked with someone in records. She was the lady that trained me and she would tell me, you'd be a really great dispatcher. And I, I just thought of that right now, by the way, I hadn't thought of that <laughs> in forever. And so I think she also planted the seed. And it was just when I talked to people on the phone, she would tell me that she's like, you have the patience too, because records requires a lot of patience, by the way. And she's <laughs> like, you have the patience. I think you'd be really great. And so it was a combination of watching them, watching who they were talking about and really knowing that I love talking to people. I really do enjoy helping people. It's a true story. So then so, yeah. what was the Academy like then? You said it was three um, weeks, right? It's three weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 well, um, I laugh because you say, what was the Academy like? And funny enough, as I started the Academy, I also learned I was pregnant with my daughter. And so <laughs> it was nauseous. I was say, it was interesting. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it was really nauseous um and also a lot of fun uh, mm -hmm. i hadn't I, I wasn't a dispatcher yet though so it was pretty foreign it was foreign concepts but still understandable and relatable and one segment that really stuck out was a couple of ladies wow you're taking me back memory lane ricardo <laughs> a couple of ladies <laughs> came in from an agency and I don't even remember the agency. It's not that I'm trying to admit it at this point. I mm -hmm. don't remember what agency they came from, but they came and they had off, um, handled an officer involved shooting together. And it would, it had been pretty recent and you could tell that I had deeply affected them, but they were there together, the dispatchers that, and it's giving me the chills just remembering that they were there together. The, the ladies that had handled the incident and held each other's hand and cried together and just showed vulnerability to all of us, but mm -hmm. also the strength of being together. And that's what I remember from the academy, that and learning my 10 codes, my nausea, the fortitude of these beautiful women that came in to share their strength and weaknesses with us, and also the 10 code segment and going to lunch every day with people <laughs> who wanted to be dispatchers. That's what the academy was. I just... Oh man! Mm -hmm. See, you know that that is pretty good. Uh, that is that is excellent that they had people come in to share those mm -hmm. stories with you because I, mm -hmm. I feel like and, and it's it might be like this in some places still, but I, I think it's changed a lot. Where when I had first started out, you know, they it was just to kind of get thrown to the wolves, and 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 you go in, you don't really know what you're going to get into. It would have been awesome to have. Um, the agency or, or whichever, you know, bring people in to tell us stories mm -hmm. here and there to just to say, look, this is what you're going to deal with. Um, but it's OK. It's OK to feel like this. Um, but again, you know, the there's really a new guard that's been coming in, you know, in the last few years where uh, back when I started, even in 2001, it was still kind of the, you know, the old school put a foot in your ass type, <laughs> you know, training, but a lot has changed. So it's, it's really cool that they, uh, that they did that with you guys and, uh, you know, shared those stories, shared that vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's really powerful. And, and yeah, and I, and I think some people still experience the, the shock, you call it the get thrown to the wolves, but it's a mm -hmm. real, it's a real shock mm -hmm. of what, the center life is like um, from ordinary possible career paths. Um, not that they're ordinary. Everything we do is extraordinary in some way, but I mean, not the 911 center. Right. Some people still experience the shock. Just depends, right? Some people go to the academy before they get hired, and some people go to the academy after they've been on the job. So here in California, at least, I don't know. I've never wondered if that's different in other states, actually. How is it for you guys? There are some states that are um, that are different where you have to, you know, go to an academy and get, um, you know, different credits and everything to be certified. Um, when I started out in Florida, it wasn't like that. Florida's like that now. Um, when I finished off my career in Michigan, I got out right before they started doing the certifications and um, all the different credit hours and everything that you needed uh, for it. Uh, so there are some states that do it, um, others don't, but uh, I got out basically right before all of that started. <laughs> I want to have a whole conversation with you about <laughs> different states. I just yeah. am like, could we take over this podcast and have that conversation? But we'll do right. it another time, hopefully. <laughs> no, we are definitely going to do a, another episode together. I would love that. Um, so you you go through your academy. You've got all of this knowledge that you've brought in. Um, and then as well. I didn't as mean to laugh. Market. And I don't mean to interrupt you, but I go through the academy and then I have to tell my bosses that I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. You could continue. It just made me laugh. And in case the audience caught it, they're like, why is she laughing at Ricardo? But it's like you say, you go through the academy. And I had a real flashback. <laughs> now I have to tell them I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's 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 good. No, that is that is funny stuff because 
I like how you are flashing back kind of to this. Because <laughs> when you were laughing at first, um, I thought, do I have something in my teeth or what's going yeah. on? And then you said that and I thought, oh, she's really flashing back. Yeah. <laughs> Really am. Yes, yeah. really, truly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then you go back and and you do. You mention all of this and, <laughs> and and probably, of course, some stories that were going on there as well. Like I was nauseous while I was trying to learn these 10 codes <laughs> and it just it blew. But what is it like then for you in the beginning now working at that center? You walk in and now mm. it's your turn to start training. Again, each one of our stories is so unique, right? And I just feel so lucky because I'd been working there for two years already in records and I knew the officers, I knew personnel. Again, it was a small agency and I knew everyone. So there was less of a shock. I knew the dispatchers. Again, I'd been walking by them for years now, a couple of years at least. And yeah, I walk into the center and I do remember them saying, you know, this is less black and white than records. This is not going to be step by step. There's so many variables. And that's the only thing we're concerned about for you is that you've been in a, set, a setting where it was do this and this and this, right? There's like steps and with 911 dispatching, every single situation comes with different factors. And yeah, that's, I remember them telling me that and me really taking it in, but I wasn't, I wasn't worried about it. I grew up with a lot of change in my life and I just knew that wasn't really going to affect the way I was able to communicate with people because I was used to change. They were concerned that perhaps because of my clerical background, that was going to be a difficulty. But then they even acknowledged like, oh yeah, we were kind of shocked. That wasn't a difficulty for you, but um, yeah, they were lovely. I know everyone has different experiences, but I really love the crew I started working with. Um, I still think of one lady in particular who trained me as a real role model in my career. Just the way she, and she's the only person, she'll know who I'm talking about, she listens to this, who I've met, who's wanted to be a dispatcher when she was a little girl. And she just want that's what she wanted to be. She has like a note from, elementary school where she's like, I want to be a dispatcher. And That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and she's so wonderful. She's so wonderful at what she does. And she also taught me that it was okay to be human on the phone and to be communicate with our humanity. And I, I don't know, that's an invaluable lesson to me that she led by example and that she really influenced the way I could proceed with how I communicate with people. So that was my experience. My experience was a really, really positive experience when I first started in dispatch, um, that transition. That is, that is really nice. You know, you, you had, I think that it was definitely an advantage, you know, having yeah. worked there and knowing everyone, because yeah. then when you get into something, it's not, it's not unfamiliar to you. So yeah. like, uh, for example, with me, you know, I started out in Florida, small police department, one dispatcher on at a time, uh, eight hour shifts. When I moved back home to Southwest Michigan, I'm in Allegan, a county I worked, uh, or not at work, that I grew up in. I knew the whole west side, the east side of the county, no idea. But um, I did eventually learn it, of course. But <laughs> I, I go into this environment where now there's a minimum of three on, a max of four on on the weekend, and the call volume is way higher. And they're just coming in and coming in and coming in. And I'm seeing people with, um, I think I think we had maybe three or four screens. But then in Allegan, it was like six. And I'm watching everyone as I come in and, you know, going around and, and looking and meeting people. And they're doing so much. They're taking the phone call. They're eating at the same time. They're, you know, with their... <laughs> <laughs> They're holding it in over here like a, like a chipmunk or squirrel or whichever. But then they're also on the radio talking to EMS or fire. They're typing all this other stuff in. And I'm thinking, man, this is unfamiliar. Like I, I have the experience, but in this setting, it's it's different. So, you know, definitely for you, there was an advantage there because things were not unfamiliar. And that's that's pretty awesome because then then you're more relaxed as you're trying to learn all this other stuff, too. Yeah, that's, yes, I could relate to 
everything you're saying though, because yes, in my first transition from records into dispatch, it was pretty smooth sailing. I knew again, now I knew the city, right? I'd been there two years. I'd been to lunch at these places that people were going to call me about. Mm -hmm. I knew the policies of our department. I knew the way sergeants like doing things. I knew the dynamic of the organization and it was really nice. But then, as you said, like you, I share, then I went into a larger setting. And I think it's really important that you mention this mm -hmm. is yes, I have the experience of being a dispatcher and I know I can do the job, but still it's like relearning. It's like starting all over again in a sense. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It's like, what's, like, what is happening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what? Yes. yes. The mm -hmm. volume gets turned all the way up. And now really up. there's so many more because like I said, I was there by myself. I didn't have um, a team to be other than, you know, those who are out on the road, of course, but with me in there, yeah. there was no one in there for me to yeah. say, you know, Hey, we've got this, it's going on as I'm typing in the call and I yell out something um, in order for the person on radios to hear me at the same time. And, uh, you know, then you have to develop that dispatcher ear where mm -hmm. you listen to every single thing that's going on mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then work like a well-oiled machine with that team. Yeah, it's so true. I could really relate to that, to being a one woman show, right? Because at the first agency I worked with, we were alone mm -hmm. um, for part of the day, one person doing everything. And then it takes a different set of skills. That takes a really different set of skills in itself. That's amazing. That's incredible to everyone who's doing that wow, you know, hats off, because we know that it takes a lot from you to do it all. But also it takes different skills to work in a team and to listen to the entire room and just a larger volume, right? The larger yeah. the agency, the more volume, probably. Yeah, probably. and, and when, it gets, when it gets even more crazy, I, I remember I can, I, I will sometimes just when I'm sitting in the living room by myself or if I'm sitting outside <laughs> or something, I don't know why, but I will imagine sometimes just sitting in dispatch because there's been a few times where I was sitting in dispatch and things have gone to hell. And all you can hear is the ringing, the radio going off and people just typing and typing and typing and thinking <laughs> this is so chaotic, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> You're walking me through your, I don't know why you're doing these things, by the way. <laughs> why are you just sitting this there? <laughs> it's like, so, is this during coffee? What are you doing? <laughs> what is happening? A lot of times, this is when I'm uh, I'm also doing different social media stuff for the podcast. And I'm seeing, you know, dispatch friends posting different incidents that are going on. So I compare. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Sometimes I'm just sitting there. <laughs> yep. Just sitting there and just kind of thinking about it. <laughs> of the chaos. Because, you know, maybe this will explain a little better. When I've talked no, I love it. I love it. About it. It doesn't they, need to be better. Um, my, it my family members have asked, you know, how did you do that for all that time? And I think maybe that's what it is that I reflect on it on my time. Like, how did that happen? Like, how did, how did I get through almost, you know, like 13 and a half years? How um, do we do it? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's hard to explain to somebody who's never done it. No, I kid. I love laughing with you. Um, it's really <laughs> funny. It's really great. And I think that's why we're friends. Um, I consider you my friend. <laughs> so sure. I hope yeah, it's mutual. Same. Yeah. Same. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah. It's profound that you sit there and reflect on it. I think that's beautiful. And it's so profound that your family members say, wow, how do you do that, right? And I think more and more family members are coming to that realization. And I think part of that is that more and more we are open to saying, that was a really hard day at work. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was intense, you know? And I don't know that we used to do that before. I can only speak for myself and I know I didn't always. Um, yeah, no, you. I'm right there with you because mm -hmm. I was, I, I've said it, Many times I was one of those who um, I would kind of bury those calls. And mm -hmm. then it, it finally got all the way up until, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. 
so you know i start writing you know i was able to get it out that way and that's how mm -hmm. i was able to get a, a lot of these stories out so um that's how that's how i've always dealt with with a lot of this because it's 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 therapy for me it's therapeutic to write them down to talk about them to share them um and so if if any of my friends or family members were like tell me about this call or this call um or you know mostly crazy or horrific or whichever i would go ahead and tell them sometimes because i i took that as an opportunity to go ahead and get it out <laughs> and and then they would just you know, be staring at me. I'm like, you asked, like, why? I thought you were going to tell me <laughs> the crazy, funny one. Like, you said crazy. You didn't say crazy funny. <laughs> you know, and I didn't go into deep detail. It was just like right. the gist, you know, an overview of something. And and just that little bit, they would say, "How do you do this?" I'm like, I'm there to help people, man. Like, that's that's my job. Like, I love what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So important to share the intensity of it. It, as you said, without every single micro detail, it's not necessary, but right. so just my, it made me think of my children. We were in the car and I don't know about you, but we have like the best conversations in the car and they were talking to me and they asked me something about work and what do you remember? And it had been a particularly stressful day. And I, to be honest, I don't remember it right now, but mm -hmm. they're like, what are the calls you remember? And I gave them the reality of the type of calls I had dealt with and my daughter just sat there and said, well, mom, next time just try to remember the, the funny ones or the happy people. <laughs> <laughs> but she understood, right, to some level. She's very young, but she understood that I have a hard, hard job. Mm -hmm. And it's not to make them feel bad about my job. I want them to know it's important. Sometimes important things, most times important things are difficult and or there will be difficulty that comes with them. And it, for them to understand that. And also when I say I have a hard, now I notice that if I say, oh my God, that day was hard. They're like really considerate with me. Um, not all the time, but <laughs> <laughs> they are still preteens. But <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like that just that conversation we had made a difference in the way that they relate to my experience. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I think, you know, building on that is definitely important to talk, you mm -hmm. know, especially with your kids and stuff about certain things that are going on. Of course, not, you know, any of the details or anything, but like you said, to let them know that it's a hard call or, you know, just some of the things, you know, an example of some of the stuff that you, uh, that you work on because they will understand more, you know, with my yeah. uh, now 16 year old, um, now that he's older, you know, I, I've told him about a few things, you know, we were talking about 2007, uh, my, my mom's mom, my grandmother, uh, my abuela, she, when she passed away, you know, I was the one who took that phone call mm. and, and, you know, we, he and I had a conversation about that and he's just kind of staring at me. And <clears throat> I remember that, uh, that he just kind of patted me on my back and he goes, you guys, you guys are awesome. Meaning like, you know, dispatchers, like what we do mm. and stuff. And uh, he goes, that's, that's just such a hard thing. He goes, I can't even imagine. And I, I was like, thanks, bud. <laughs> yeah. But, that recognition even there, you know, with him and I talking about that, um, that was pretty cool. That is really, I mean, so difficult, right? Your experience of taking that hard call, losing a beloved. So I, w I want to pat you on the back right now, and I <laughs> wish I could. Thanks. <laughs> but the wisdom of children, right, also, like, they know, they, you tell them and they understand the deeper meaning. Dispatchers do such a hard job. They're able to recognize that. Right. And I, I really love that about children, um, that they're so wise. Yeah, it's, it's funny that mm -hmm. you sometimes you don't think that they're listening. And then later on, they'll say something and like, Oh, you're, you're paying attention. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> Best split ear ever children, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. They're always listening. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, they are yeah. always listening. Mm -hmm. Yes. I've yes. had some moments where <laughs> I thought they weren't listening because I didn't want them to listen. And then a word gets repeated. I'm like, all right. <laughs> I need to <laughs> own it down. <laughs> yeah. The, well, they are always listening unless you're telling them to do their chores. Or... Of course. There right. you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, so you, you've you been, you're working there at the center. And even when you... Uh, you know, you move up into the bigger center and all, 
do you remember your first call from either one or any earlier calls that you had taken? Like for myself, some earlier ones were, you know, suicide calls, domestics. Some of them, you know, are ones that, uh, that will stick with me. But that very first one that I took in Allegan, um, that was an emergency call while I was in training was a domestic. And I remember I could not get the information in like with this old system that we had, you had to have the, the right, um, township code and, or city code and incident type, or it would not go, you could not get to the narrative part. And I remember looking at my trainer and I said, I think you need to take this call because it's taking me too long to get this in. And she goes, no, you're going to do this. You can do this. You've got this. And she was right. I, I ended up getting it and I got through the call got help there and everything ended up being fine. But I will never forget that moment where I was like, I don't think I can do this. And she's, no, you got this. You can do this. Yeah. Um, I started. And thanks for translating township for me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Although I did know it was city, but I appreciated it. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I'm from the West Coast. So um, I love that. Yeah, I started my first day in dispatch was 11 to 9. I'm not going to forget that. Mm -hmm. And I plugged in because I was training. So I don't know about many agencies, but still plugged in with the two prongs into oh, the yeah. console. Yes. And the first call was bananas. It was just, and I wasn't taking it. I was just listening to my trainer, but it was just, it was so crazy. Um, I will say that the guy thought he was Han Hannibal Lecter. And um, yeah, just just intense, intense, intense. And I, of course, will never forget my first call, just listening to the magnitude of what was to come, what was to come. Yeah, it was just a crazy, busy call. And that was my first, literally, I just plugged in. That was the call she answered the moment I had put my little two prongs in and I was just like, welcome aboard. This Jeez. is what it is. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Your, your story and mine is a little similar where the first call that I listened to in Allegan, it was a midnight shift. My first shift was midnight shift and I go in, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'm sitting with my trainer we're sitting at the main phone position and we had the same thing. Those, those two prongs you plug in and I had the little, we had the little adapter to mute my microphone. Yeah. And then, you know, keep theirs going. Yeah. And, you know, the, the call comes in and it's a guy who's freaking out and, you know, get the location, all the information and everything and um, asks him what's going on. And he says, well, I thought there was an animal that was on the side of the road um, that was crawling. He goes, but it's, it's not, it's a guy. And I remember sitting there and I think I covered my mouth because I gasped and I went <gasps> and, and I'm sitting there and she goes, you know, asking him how he's doing or, or what's going on, trying to get further information. We already had an officer going out there for kind of an unknown situation. We had medical going out there, too. Well, the guy had tried to uh, commit suicide mm. and and he he slipped with a shotgun and his so his chin was just kind of kind of hanging there yeah. and I remember sitting there and my trainer is looking at me as he's saying all of this and I remember my eyes just just being like popped open because I had taken some calls in Florida my first one there you know was a, a suicide call um, mm. but this one like you I was not expecting as soon as I come in to have something that intense happen and when we got done with the call she goes are you all right and I said yeah. And, uh, and she goes, do you need to take a break a minute? I was like, no, 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 let's keep going. Like, let's keep doing this. Like I'm, I'm here. Like I'm in, I'm, I'm literally wired in, I'm plugged in. Let's, let's continue this experience. Cause this is now my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is, that was, still <laughs> is, still is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That is similar. It's a similar experience. It's just like, I don't know, maybe it was the universe being like, welcome. Right. Here, yeah. here it is. 
This is it. <laughs> yeah, this is this is now your job. This is it was forthcoming at least with us. You know, there was right. Yeah, there we are. No, no appearance of otherwise being calm. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It those, was not calm. Those calls, you know, the the ones that uh, we remember that always stay there. It's it's just interesting, but it is also that type of job you know yeah. you can't make this stuff up no i literally couldn't literally could not so you've been you've been dispatching for 11 years but total has been 14 um including records and all yeah around um, there so when was it that you decided or that you took interest rather into uh into yoga because you know you you're dispatching still, um, but you're also the founder of Dispatch Wellness. I am. So at yes. what point did you start getting into um, all of this? Hmm. At what point? So I've always been really interested in wellness. Mm -hmm. And it just took, it was something that I've always been interested in. And, and I mentioned in 2007, I was getting ready to get married. And in 2012, I was getting ready to get divorced. And it was a really difficult time in my life. Mm -hmm. So as we all know, we are in the dispatch center so long and dealing with emergencies and crisis and other people's problems. But doesn't mean that outside of the center, we're not dealing with our own crises. Crisis. Right. Am I saying that right? I don't know. I'm not even going to try um, to correct myself, but you know, we're dealing with our own issues, our own problems. Life outside the center goes on. And sometimes I think, at least for myself, I don't know that I was equipped to deal with both these realities at the same time, the intensity of the work and then the intensity that can be life. And so I recognized in 2000, 12 that that something needed to change i was either going to have to be better equipped to deal with the intensity of my life and the intensity of work i was going to have to find another career but i could not imagine finding another career i was very much in love with the profession mm -hmm. and yeah i was just having a really difficult time personally and it was then that a good friend at that time drove me to my first therapy session um, and forever grateful to him for doing that. And the thing with wellness and anything that comes with really beautiful side effects is the moment we make a little bit of space for it, that space seems to grow, right? And so I started doing therapy and then I had a little bit more space and I started doing yoga. I was attracted to yoga for some reason. Zero flexibility, by the way, had never done yoga. And I just thought I was at work on 11 to 9 again in this story, I was at work thinking, huh, let's see what the local yoga studios offer for work after I get off my shift. And they had a late, it was Bikram yoga and it's hot yoga. I, to all those who are not familiar, it's like 104 degrees in there, 90 minutes. Um, so <laughs> that's what was local. And I thought that sounds really fantastic. I love the heat. And uh, or it's not the same kind of heat, okay? And <laughs> but I kept going back. It helped me release. I was really angry at that time with things that were going on in my life, and I was just so angry at the heat. It kind of gave me a like outlet to mm -hmm. release. And then the breathing and the stretching and the movement, I found real power in that. And so I just kept coming back to yoga, and. It started with Bikram and then I was doing yoga and therapy and my hunger for investigating that and learning more and more just grew. It just grew. And I felt the benefits of being able to cope with life and with the intensity of work or the intensity of life and work. You know, sometimes it fluctuates or sometimes they're both really intense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's how I got into wellness. It's just, it wasn't, I wasn't doing it to start dispatch wellness. I wish I could say I was but I wasn't. And that journey led me to then go to yoga teacher training with Yoga Works, who have now closed due to this pandemic. 
their brick and mortar locations, which is really sad, but they're a huge institution in the yoga world. And I did my 200 hour teacher training and my 300 hour teacher training. And then I did lots of trainings and like mindfulness and then nutrition coach training. Just the hunger hasn't stopped. I'm doing training now on mindfulness, self-compassion and just a real hunger because I need it. Right. Because my life requires it because I want to show up fully for myself and for my children and for my profession also. And yeah. And, and all of that, it, all of that definitely helps in uh, the dispatch center as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you can bring yeah. all that you've learned yeah. into that setting to assist you after a call or mm -hmm. because we're, uh, how many hours do you guys work? So I work, it varies. It really depends who you ask, how many hours they work, but you know, it varies. There's always overtime, always well, a lot like of the, overtime. The shift. Like, are you 12 hours? Oh, shift? sorry. That's hours? what you were asking. Gotcha. I was thinking, because I always ask people, how many hours do you work a week? I'm very interested <laughs> in that did, when I'm coaching them. <laughs> so how many hours do you work a week? It's a really important question, but you're asking our shifts. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, we work tens. We work four tens. Tens. Okay. Yeah. So then with, with those tens, you know, you're, you're sitting all the time mm -hmm. and not, you don't always get a chance to get up and stretch. You know, if you're on call after call after call, I would stand up or I would move, uh, you know, our desks up and down or whichever. Or if I, any time I got a chance, uh, even if I didn't have to go use the bathroom, I'd say, I got to go use the bathroom just so that I could walk down Sorry. the hall mm -hmm. and come back. To, yeah. to get that exercise because I could feel my body stiffening up. And yeah. sometimes the pain I remember would go to my neck and then into my temple and I would get dizzy. And uh, my coworkers would say, you all right? I'm like, no, I need to stretch or something because I, I'm just sitting here like all of you and it's now affecting me. And, and that's how I got into yoga was because I was having back problems in dispatch because I was having shoulder problems because the pains in my neck and my neck getting so stiff that it was causing like it, it was it was bad. So doing yoga, even just one session, one one hour session of doing yoga that day, that first time, even that uh, gave me some relief from some of the pain that I was having in my uh, my lower back. Yeah. Yeah. Yoga is fantastic. Obviously, I love it, but it <laughs> it helps with, you know, you were doing it because you were feeling body aches. I was doing it because I was losing my bananas. Like, um, it helps with all of it because the breathing, the stretching, the space, the quiet, being in a, you know, that's all you're doing is the yoga. Right. And how many times as dispatchers do we do just one thing at a time? I don't know. Each, um, each one of your audience members will answer that for themselves. I know. I was going to yes. say, um, <laughs> I mean, even when you're sitting there trying to eat your meal, you're probably on a phone call. <laughs> so there's so many other things that are going on. Yeah. And sometimes we come home and I notice it now that I become more aware of it and I'm eating my meal. Like I'm going to take a call next or what am I doing? I'm a home. Um, <laughs> but it stays, it stays ingrained. It's, we're doing it for a long period of time. So to be, to be gentle with ourselves is really important. Like when I right. notice it, I'm like, oh, hey there, hi, we're not taking any more calls today. Yeah. <laughs> um, we could chew our food now. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. you don't have to hoover it. You don't have to vacuum it in <laughs> yes. as fast as possible. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> now right. you are, you're part of Dare to Be Great too. And you're I doing am. a session called Dare to Get Rest. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about this as I was getting ready to um, to bring you on because I had an episode over the weekend. And it started this past Friday. And I'm sitting here and I'm looking at my screen as I'm trying to put a bunch of stuff together for everything that I've been doing. And I started to get dizzy. And I thought, uh, okay, what is going on? And I stood up and started stretching and man, my body was so stiff. And I had realized that for, for like the past few weeks, 
I've just simply been sitting here. I haven't been going and doing anything else. I haven't been taking breaks like I should have been uh, to to get some exercise into stretch or to do whatever. I've been stressing out. So over the weekend, it was it was my body's turn to tell me, hey, you need to settle down and get your shit together because I'm going to tell you that it's time to rest. And I, man... Pretty much the whole weekend, I was kind of sleeping on and off. I needed to get rest. And since Sunday, um, I, I started full full on back <laughs> on the on the yoga train and riding my bike and exercising, mm-hmm. staying uh, stretched out. And I feel a hell of a lot better. But yeah. I thought about your session that was coming and I thought, man, my body really told me that I needed to get rest and... Mm-hmm. It put me out. <laughs> and it gently told you, right? Mm-hmm. It gently told you by becoming tired that you needed rest. But sometimes if we ignore it long enough, the reminders won't be as gentle mm-hmm. as nearly, you know, just getting needing to get a weekend's rest. Although that's wonderful. I'm glad you took that time. And I was smiling at you as you were saying your experience about the weekend because before we got on the call, you were talking about how one of your daughters once had a puppy. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I was thinking about how earlier my puppy that's here, was barking. And I was thinking, oh, my God, that's going to go into the audio. But I'm dog sitting my dad's puppy. And I've noticed that because I have the dog here, I have to go out and move three times, four times a day. And so I just want to make a case for your daughter. I think the, pu- the puppy would help you move around more. And... <laughs> And I think you need to get it for her because you will move around more. And you're right. We move, we don't move around and then that energy gets stagnant and then our body gets stiff and then we have aches and pains. And sometimes there could be more deterioration. And on top of it all, we work in a culture where we don't get very much sleep. Mm -hmm. Um, Somehow we've trained our bodies to get five or six hours. And I'm not saying, please, I'm saying this with all the love and all the kindness and all the understanding because I do this work too. And I have a family too. And I understand how sometimes putting off our sleep could seem like a really great idea, but it's not, right? Um, What if more and more research shows that improper sleep leads to all kinds of serious consequences? And what if I just simply told you that there's one thing you can do that's free that will help your mental health, your emotional health, your weight, your ability to function, your focus for free. One thing, and that's sleep and rest. <laughs> it's free. You, you don't right. even need, you know, you don't need me. You don't need dispatch wellness. You don't need anyone else. It's literally free. And like everything that we want to change, we could do it in small increments. We could mm-hmm. incorporate better practices and smaller gentler steps than we're used to because we're used to like really big steps at least I was um, to start making our sleep more of a priority and and see how we feel with that I would bet money that you'd be going to feel better oh for sure I Mm -hmm. yeah because I um, (laughs) sleeping on and off throughout the day on Sunday really showed me even though I felt groggy afterwards when it yeah. was time to crash out, I crashed out again and crashed out hard. And then Monday yeah. morning, um, yesterday morning, it's Tuesday now. I felt like it was Wednesday. Yesterday, um, I definitely felt way, way better. And uh, it was just, man, it was horrible. And I thought, mm, I think it's time to really get in on the self-care, which is what I've been telling myself. And mm-hmm. uh, my body told me for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All experience, right? Like your body, it's like you're a researcher. I always say this to people. It's like we're researchers of ourselves, what works, what doesn't. And your body's just saying, hey, listen, when we sit all weekend and we don't get sleep, I feel this way. And then you do your other research and you're like, well, when I take care of myself and I get sleep and I take a weekend off to rest, I feel this other way. And actually my sleep improves the more I tend to it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. It's just data. I love data. Right. Yeah. Yes. It, it's data. It's also the way 
it's also common sense that if you if you get rest as well, that that'll happen. And I, I love how you put it as well. You know, if I could tell you that you could get this, this, and this for something that's free, free, uh, yeah, just putting that to somebody, you saying free. that, be hearing it, I'm like <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, that's so please. great. I buy it, and it's free, so I don't have to. Right. But... Yes. <laughs> Can you bottle it? Can you give that to someone? <laughs> no. no, you just do it. <laughs> yeah, you just have to like start incrementally making more and more time to sleep. Right. And I'll say it from someone that was sleeping very little. Even I was already teaching yoga. I was already, but I don't know. It got more and more convenient to sleep less and less until it didn't. Mm -hmm. Until there was a huge shout from my body and my emotional health and my mental health saying, hey, listen, we need to do something different. And that's something different when I looked at my life with sleeping. And yeah. It's I crazy. want to share that with everyone. <laughs> I want everyone to get more sleep. Right. This is all I talk about at work, by the way. People are really probably annoyed at me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this is good, though. It's 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 stuff that, you know, it ends up planting that seed. Um, mm. and, and it stays I with them. So. You know, I it's it's so. almost like, um, you know, a, a commercial, I guess. You know, you see certain commercials that have little things that are unique that you, a month or two later, it's not on TV anymore. But you remember it because of that one thing. And, and you talking about this stuff all the time, no matter what, you know, reception you're getting from people, you're planting a seed in, in them. You know, every person that you spoke to at the first Dare to Be Great conference, you were planting that seed. And people remember that days, months, whatever, later on. Like, oh, yeah, I remember Luce was telling me that she was right. I needed sleep <laughs> or I needed to do this or that. And that's a good thing. That is definitely yeah. a good thing. And it's a real dare, right? Like you dared to take a weekend off and get rest. It's a real, real dare. Dare to do this and just research, see how you feel, see right. if it makes a difference in your life. Yeah. Now, as we're going into the wrap up of yeah. uh, this episode, this has been a lot of fun. Um, yes. What is what's new that's going on with Dispatch Wellness and how can they find out more about what it is that you're doing? Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I love it. What's new? Well, we just started, we, because there is a cohort of us, um, small group nutrition and mindfulness coaching. Enrollment is closed, but there is an interest list. If anyone listening is interested, they just go to the link on my Instagram I'm getting ahead of myself because I get so excited. But so <laughs> we just started small group nutrition, mind, nutrition and mindfulness coaching. Mm -hmm. I can't even talk right. This is how excited I am about this. <laughs> this is Let good. me settle down. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're going to work in a small group for a year mm -hmm. and work on our habits. Small level one foundational habits that will make an impact in our lives, like resting, like nutrition like paying attention to what we're eating and how it's making us feel and the movement we're getting, how that's making us feel. So just habits that will stick. And the reason it's one year, it's designed that way because habits take a while to stick. You know that you just said like, I go on and off from doing yoga. That's mm -hmm. because you're building a new habit and that's part of the process. Right. And if we identify that, Oh, I'm just in the process as Brene Brown, who I love says, you're, you're rumbling with it. You're in the thick of it. You're doing it. And so we're a group that is there to support each other. We're all dispatchers. So we all know each other's experience and we know the challenges and we know the joys. And so we're able to share that together. And you could find out more about that through my Instagram at dispatch wellness on my website, dispatchwellness.com. I'm on Facebook as dispatch wellness. Those are pretty much my primary sources of, of communication with people and there's an interest list because this session is closed there's an interest list for january 2021 if anyone's interested in participating in the next cohort of small group nutrition and mindfulness coaching thank you for putting all right that up there yeah. excellent i appreciate now it. as just a a little preview into the session yeah. that you're going to be doing mm -hmm. what are you going to be bringing to the audience with dare to get Rid? <sighs> oh my god this has been occupying so much of my time in my thoughts like i love thinking about it what am i going to be doing at this session what am i going to share with these lovely people who show up we're going to be talking about the benefits of rest i will we'll do that briefly we'll be practicing some 
yoga that could help with winding down. So I'm really excited about that. And as a preview, all you need, I want to make it very accessible because I know a lot of people will be joining from work. So it will more than likely be sitting and standing um, postures. We'll be doing meditation to help relax. And we'll be doing a journal, journaling exercise to wind down. It's all geared towards winding down, letting go of the day and being able to get some good rest. So Perfect. you will not fall asleep if you don't want to though. I do want to just claim that someone's like, I'm not <laughs> gonna fall asleep at work. I mean, if they let you do it, but if they don't, you don't have to fall asleep, no. Yeah, That's there's awesome. no sleeping involved. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been excellent to have you on and I am crazy excited for your session that you're going to be doing. I know I could have used it probably uh, over the weekend or before yeah. the weekend, before it all happened. But, you know, so I'm a firm believer that, you know, if things happen for a reason. And I think that for myself, I needed that to happen. Um, I'm one who learns the hard way sometimes <laughs> with a lot of different things. So I think this was just one of those things where I, my body needed to just straight up tell me you need to sit your ass down and just get some rest you're doing too much and if you're not going to do this on your own we're going to do it for you <laughs> yeah yeah your body will let you know for sure yes so again i'm excited to um to have you come back and to do this type of session i think it's something that everyone needs you know, everyone's mm -hmm. trying to figure out different things to do um, with this pandemic that's going on. And people are worrying a lot. There's there's a lot of worry out there. And I think mm -hmm. you just continue to push and push and push that this is definitely a message that people need to hear. This is the type of session that people definitely need to attend is so that they can figure out, you know, different techniques, tips, just conversation, information that you're going to give on on how they can rest because like you were saying earlier you know mm. this is something I mean, you made it sound like a product and i thought i would buy that in an instant man i would buy that i would drink it and or eat it or whatever but it's all just you you just have to take that time to rest mm. yeah and it's of course acknowledging that it's not right anything is not just it all takes a process mm -hmm. and and so for people not to be hard on themselves is really what I want to convey if they're not getting the rest they need yet but knowing that they could work towards it and I don't know I'm a testament to that um, I was really honestly sleeping very little at one point during the earlier in the year and then I just incrementally and using the practices I'm going to share started tending to my sleep. And it's like, I'm a different person, honestly, mm -hmm. um, when I get sleep and when I don't get sleep. And now I notice it before I was probably just Corolla DeVille the whole time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not I like sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Very nice. Well, again, thank you so much for being on. This has been awesome. I'm, fine, I'm, I'm glad that we finally got a chance to do this and we definitely have, another episode or a dispatcher's round table episode, something more that we're going to be able yeah. to do together. So thank you so much for being on. I'm all in because, you know, I really enjoy our conversation. So thank you for having me. So excited for dare to be great. People go register mm -hmm. now this moment. It will be phenomenal. It's going to be fantastic. It'll be excellent. Yes. Again, yes, thank you very much. And uh, I will be right back with you here. And uh, for those who are watching, if you have any comments, questions, or you want to be a guest on the show, you can email us. And that's going to be uh, WTTPodcast at gmail.com. Once again, it's WTTPodcast at gmail.com. This episode has been sponsored by InDigital as well as Rapid Deploy. And this show will always be free. But if you're looking for any bonus content, uh, behind the scenes series, Singing Badly in My Car series, um, a lot of different items that are coming to the store. Patrons are, are getting a first look at a lot of that stuff as well. Sneak peeks and such. Um, also ad-free episodes that come a week early. Um, you can head over to patreon.com slash WTT podcast and check that out there. And once again, 
make sure to check out everything that Luce is doing with uh, dispatchwellness.com. There's the information right there. Dispatchwellness.com. There's a lot of different things that she's doing. And uh, like she said, register for Dare to Be Great uh, 2. That is going to be within the trenches.net slash conference. And it's it's going to be it's going to be excellent. So again, check out everything that she's doing. She's going to be a speaker there, and her session is Dare to Get Rest. And uh, this can be viewed. Uh, this video here can be viewed on Facebook as well as YouTube. The audio portion of this can be heard twenty four seven on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, your favorite podcasting app, and within the trenches dot net. Have a good one, everyone. <laughs>